Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dine with World. My name is Amina and it's a nice uh, chilly Sunday evening. And uh, today we have some really nice recipes lined up for you to make your winters, um, to make comforting food uh, so that you can uh, serve this to your family and friends during this uh, winter season. And we have a very talented chef with us. Uh, his name is uh, Asad and he uh, is at Zigilini's. So, uh, without further delay, let's welcome Chef Asad. Assalamu alaikum Asad, Asalaam how are you? Welcome to Dine with World. Thank you, I'm very well, how are you? I'm alright, thank you. And um, I, I told our viewers you've come up with some nice uh, winter recipes. Yeah, yeah. For, to just bring some comfort to, uh, uh, win to the winter season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, are you, what do you plan to uh, teach us today? So, today we're going to make uh, start with the soup. Because in the winter season, mostly people like to have soup. And what kind of soup are we teaching everyone? Lentil soup. Lentil soup. Yeah. Before we uh, go on to the recipes, you are um, uh, Asad Damanat. Yeah. You are at Zigulinis and you are? Chef de Party. Chef de Party. And you've been at Zigulinis for I think five years? Five years, yes. And you must have, it must have been a long journey. Yeah. Uh, you coming in to Zigulinis yeah. and Zigulinis. you know, being yes. very young, not knowing anything. And yes. he's working under Chef Mirko, the Italian chef. Uh, so you must have uh, learned a lot, you know, yeah. with lots of different chefs, yes. new techniques. New techniques. New uh, every chef have a different style, different and techniques. And different parts of Italy and also. Yes. yes. So, so they always teach you something new. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So lentil soup. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let's show the ingredients. Uh, we have lentils. Yeah. yeah what are you going to put in the soup? Mixed Actually, lentils. Actually, uh, we are going to use mixed lentils. Okay. Okay. So it's very easy to have uh, in our yeah, local it's, market. Yeah. It's in every home. Yes. So we use the lentils, yeah. garlic, right. onion, right. salt and pepper, and stock. Fantastic. So let's go on to the ingredients. Uh, to make lentil soup, you'll be needing mixed lentils, 200 grams, garlic, 2 grams, onion, 5 grams, salt, 1 gram, pepper, 1 gram, potato, 20 grams. That was easy. Yeah. yeah? Easy so, and it's very healthy and tasty. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll make it uh, today. Let's start. Let's start. Here. We're using the olive oil. Olive oil. Okay. So we have one onion. Let's saute a little bit. Onion yeah. and after we put garlic and after garlic lentils. Because if you go step by step with a proper recipe, you have a good soup and good food. So if you've just joined in here making lentil soup, you just need mixed lentils, potatoes, garlic paste, onions, oil, salt and pepper and some potatoes. That's yes. it. And now we're gonna add lentils. Okay. So you're not going to soak the lentils from before? No, we already soaked. Okay, <laughs> this is, uh, we soaked the lentils for around an hour? Yes. Right. So basically just, um, well, frying the lentils? Little bit, not Little so much. Bit. Okay. And after, now we have to add some water. Not some water, uh, slowly, slowly. Stock. Stock. Yeah. You can add vegetable stock, you can add chicken stock. Chicken That's stock, up to yes, you. up to you. This is a very interesting way of making lentil soup. Really what we do at home is we boil the lentils, like yeah. you know, we make daily lentils at home. Yes. And then we add in the spices, yes. uh, even for the soup. But this, you're sauteing the onions first, then you fry the lentils. Yes. Uh, you, we've already added the ginger garlic paste. And, uh, and now we add the potato for and we, thickness. Yeah. And you're boiling the lentils uh, in vegetable or chicken stock, that's up to you. Now we're adding potatoes. potatoes. Wow, this already looks really yummy. 
So yeah, we make usually at home is here in Pakistan. We make yes. hot and sour soup or chicken, chicken corn, corn soup. Corn why why not lentil soup? Yes, it's made well. It's really delicious. Which is your favorite soup, Asim? Uh, mostly, I don't like a Chinese soup. You don't um, like Chinese? No. Wow, it's the first time I've heard someone <laughs> yeah, that doesn't like Yeah, I like, like Italian soups, like a uh -huh. tomato soup, lentil uh -huh. soup. Yeah, tomato soup, of yes. course. You are going to teach us how to make tomato soup yet? Yeah, sure, sure. You put more water. Now we put salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Are you going to puree it? Yes. Okay. After that, we have to blend. Okay. Yeah. It will take uh, approximately 20 to 25 minutes mm -hmm. to cook. So, because I have a lentil, so yeah. it will take time. Yeah. Okay. So, so after lentil bit. soup, uh, what main course would you suggest? You know, if someone wants to make a main course after main this? Course. I suggest beef, mm -hmm. beef tenderloin. Right. So today also we make a beef tenderloin mm -hmm. with a balsamic sauce, mm -hmm. beetroot puree, yeah. uh, sorry, broccoli puree yeah. and beetroots. Okay, all right, fantastic. Uh, so let's put this on the side. Yeah, yeah. that's perfect. So by the, while this is being, we're cooking the, the lentil soup, it's going to take around 20 to 25 minutes. We're going to go on to our second recipe. After this is done, um, Asad will blend it. Yes. Uh, into a puree, puree and then we're going to serve it with some nice garlic bread. So the second recipe I said it is so beef, tenderloin. beef tenderloin with the balsamic sauce, uh, broccoli puree and uh, beetroot. And uh, you make this, bals is this reduced balsamic sauce? Uh, are you going to use reduced balsamic vinegar in this? Uh, no. Okay. I'm okay. going to, I'm using normal balsamic All and after right. we reduce hair. You're going to reduce it yes. here? That's, that's going to be uh, interesting. The ingredients of this really delicious Italian recipe is you'll be needing 200 grams of beef tenderloin, 30 milliliters of balsamic vinegar, 10 grams of broccoli, 10 grams of beetroot, 5 grams of carrot and 1 gram of salt and pepper. Nice simple ingredients. Yes, and uh, it looks nice. Okay, let's start then. Broccoli is one of my favorite vegetables. Yeah, my good. sister makes broccoli and white sauce. Broccoli right? and white sauce? Yeah, white sauce, broccoli and potatoes. Wow, yeah, that's nice. And it's really yummy. Yeah. Little bit of olive oil. Okay. I take a little garlic. Broccoli is... We're going to first saute the broccoli. So if you just joined okay. in, we are making lentil soup here on the side, and here we're making uh, beef roe. We're making beef tenderloin with balsamic sauce, broccoli puree, puree. and beetroot. Beetroot, exactly. So first we just saute the, the broccoli. broccoli, and after we add the stock, okay, little bit potatoes to make puree. Yeah. And after we blend it, okay. so we have a nice puree. So it's an amazing, you know, Dying with World is a, is a show where you can learn authentic uh, recipes because yes. we have chefs from authentic fine dining restaurants, Asad is in the Bulinis, uh, which serves authentic Italian cuisine. And um, yeah, I think we're very lucky, really Asad. I'm very lucky to learn all of this from you. And now we're going to make uh, our sauce, mm -hmm. balsamic sauce. A okay. little bit garlic. Yeah. And we have a balsamic here. So the difference between balsamic vinegar and normal vinegar, as you can see, it's dark and it's concentrated, um, and uh, it's it's partially made from grapes, I think. Right? No, it's from Italy. Yeah, it's from Italy made from grapes. Madonna. M made from yeah. grapes, yes, it's, grapes. It's made from grapes. It's, and, uh, it's purely used in Italian uh, cuisine. And has a nice strong flavor, flavor. to it. Yeah. yeah. 
and in Italy, Madonna is a place is a famous for balsamic vinegar. We add it to be salt and pepper. Yum, yum. Really nice. Like I can imagine using balsamic vinegar as a sauce. Yeah. Sauce, yes. So with the beef uh, balsamic vinegar mm. is amazing. As you see, when it's running, uh, it's thick after yeah. reducing. So, yes. I don't want to make them more thick. All right, so this yes, is the right perfect. consistency. Yes. Don't, you don't reduce it further, don't thicken yes. it further. So, our puree yeah. and sauce is ready. So now we go with the beef. Okay. So we have a very nice beef tenderloin. It's the softest part of yes of the beef. Beef. Okay, so now we just can pan sear this. How many uh, minutes do we uh, sear pan sear each side? Two minutes. Okay. Because. Uh, we don't want to weld them okay. because after welding it's very hard. Right. So whenever you have a tenderloin, you eat medium well. Some people like welding, but I don't think so. The welding is a good for to, to good to eat. Okay. So medium well is the best form, I guess. Best form, yes. Best temperature. Because in people who are not used to having, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, the foreigners and the Italians, they never eat well done. They eat every time uh, medium rare, medium well, these temperatures. Because uh, after well done, beef yeah, is yeah. very hard. It moisture and yes. Okay. Wow, this looks very nice, nice. Dark brown, golden color golden on color. each side. Yes. So we can pour the balsamic vinegar. If you just missed out on how to make balsamic, the, the, the balsamic sauce, uh, you saute garlic, you add the balsamic vinegar, add salt and pepper, and salt just and reduce pepper. it yes. to a nice consistency, not too thick. Yes. Your, your sauce is ready. And after, now we add salt and pepper in it. And here we're making lentil soup. Wow. Looks really nice. And on this side, you can serve this with stir fried broccoli and potatoes. You can add any other vegetable if you want. If you want, yes. Yes, our beef is ready because we don't want well done. So it's a medium well, it's ready. And now we're gonna make puree. Broccoli was ready. We add just water and blend it. So this so is uh, the puree broccoli and potatoes? Yeah. Yes. It's really nice, nice green color, wow. And uh, do you've not seasoned this with salt and pepper? No. Okay. Now we season it. Looks really nice. So imagine you're serving medium well beef, uh, vegetable puree, broccoli puree. Broccoli puree, yes. Uh, and balsamic some balsamic sauce. sauce looks really nice. And not to forget the beef root. Yes. Yes, our puree is ready. 
and now our uh, last ingredient beetroot so we start to make a beetroot and carry so we have a beetroot and I'm gonna cut in a cube cutting so people like some like cube some like julian but I like the cube for today and we have to boil wow two big cubes of um beetroot in the water you can add salt and pepper okay and add a cube of beetroot i love the way it's so uh, concise and so portioned only two cubes yeah uh -huh. not so much and we're going to use carrot as well Okay, you're also going to boil some carrots. Yeah, not so much, just a little bit. So we are just in the process of making some nice, uh, well I'm not going to call it beef snake steaks. It's beef tenderloin, a boss snake sauce, broccoli puree and beetroot. So we're just going to bring the soup for you that we pureed before. And this is how it looks like. Yes. So this is how the puree soup looks like. We're just going to reheat it a, a bit here. Yeah. Wow. Nice and thick. Of course, uh, you know, if you don't finish it, you can use it the, the next day. Yes. Yeah, maximum a day, I guess. Yes, uh, two days you can use. Okay. So you can reheat it and have it. Yes. Okay. So our soup is done. So let's plate up. So we are using the one soup bowl. Wow. Yes, and uh, for the garnish, we can use flowers, eatable flowers, broccoli, okay. basil. Do you need some flowers? Yes, thank you. We have eatable flowers and oil, olive oil, whatever you like. We have some cream also. You can put cream also. That would be very nice. Just, just for the garnish. It's not a part of the soup. It's for garnish. Okay, this looks very nice. So, yeah, you can just get creative. Uh, drizzle some olive oil cream on top. Yes. And now for the garnishing. We have some eatable flowers. Very pretty. And use only eatable flowers. Use only flowers that you can eat. I think this is your chef Miko's um, idea yes. of using uh, flowers. flowers. Yeah, it looks very pretty. Yes, flowers and all the ingredients is a chef Miko. Yeah. It's a very different idea.
This is lentil soup. It looks beautiful and I'm sure it tastes delicious as well. Yeah. Right? We just put this here. Yes, so now we are start with the our beef. So we start with our puree. We have a very nice puree. Mm -mm -mm. Take a beetroots, our boiled beetroots and carrots. I love the way he's picking it up with his tongue. I would just take a spoon, a big spoon, and just <laughs> yeah, stream the water. Yeah, so. Reheating the, the vinegar sauce? The sauce, yes. Yes, I think it's done. Thank you. Wow. Looks very nice. Can I just bring this here? This is just olive oil and... Yes. And we are using fighting bag for the... Wow. Pork. And now he's going to pipe out the puree. Now this yeah. is something that you need to see. And these are piping bags that he's made himself. Right? Yes. In the market you can uh, take yeah, from the market the also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna garnish with the, some eatable flowers. Let's use this. What is this? It's a rosemary. Let's use rosemary. Yeah, sure. What is this, chef? This is a uh, black olives. Black olives, dried yes, black dried olives. Dried black olives. Wow. Where we do you get these from? We use for only for the garnish. Okay, dried black olives. Dry black olives. Is it easily available in the yes, market? Yes. Yes. It's only used for garnishing. Only for garnishing. Now this, I'm sure this tastes as good as it looks. It looks very pretty. So, yes. wow, this is, ladies and gentlemen, um, beet tenderloin with broccoli, broccoli puree and beetroots. Looks really nice. 
and of course italian cuisine is not complete without pasta yeah yeah uh, our third recipe asad is is a homemade potato gnocchi wow homemade potato gnocchi yeah. and i love how do you pronounce this gnocchi gnocchi and it's really delicious because yes. i've had it and it's my favorite so we're just going to um go into the ingredients of this recipe So our third recipe is we're making gnocchi with asparagus, mushrooms, and Mush tomatoes. And tomatoes. But this uh, gnocchi is not a normal gnocchi. We make it with the beetroot. You make it with beetroot? Yeah. Okay. Wow. We make it with the beetroot. So, but this has potatoes in it, right? Yeah. Potatoes, flour, and egg. Okay. So gnocchi has potatoes in it. So it's a a, a varied family of dump dumplings, and uh, it's made from dough, semolina. Flour, flour, potatoes, yes, potatoes egg, uh, and egg, and um, it's really delicious. Yes, right. Yes. Uh, Asad, if someone wants to make gnocchi at home, could you just give a um, a small, you know, procedure method of how to make it? Yeah, gnocchi. Uh, the basic and classic gnocchi have only three ingredients. Okay, one is egg, flour, and potatoes. Mm -hmm. So in a one kg. If you want to make a big quantity, so I'm going to tell you for one kg. So for one kg potatoes, you can add it to 600 gram of flour and one or two egg yolks. That's it. And you make a like a pizza dough. You make a dough, and after you're going to make a yeah, like a ravioli with whatever shape you want. You can make. Okay, perfect. So, but you've already made the gnocchi, yeah? Yeah. You made the gnocchi, and you're going to teach us how to. How make the make. sauce and and how no. to actually make the gnocchi. No, I am going to teach how to make a gnocchi here. Okay, perfect. Gnocchi. So let's start. Yeah, let's oh. start. Yeah, you can get your stuff. Uh, I forgot to give the ingredients. The ingredients of this recipe are you'll be needing. You'll be needing olive oil five milliliters, potato hundred grams, mushrooms and fresh tomatoes. Flour thirty grams, egg yolk one, beetroot juice five milliliters, asparagus ten grams, mushrooms ten grams, tomatoes ten grams, salt and pepper one gram. Yeah. So we start. So first, we're going to teach you how to make the dough. The dough, yes. Okay. So we add the flour. Okay. And now we have to add the potatoes. The main ingredient of gnocchi, yeah, potatoes. Yeah, wow. this is boiled potatoes. Boiled potatoes. Okay. So we're gonna make a beetroot gnocchi. So we have a beetroot juice. So we add beetroot juice. And I think it's going to give the gnocchi a very solid. I think it's going to give the gnocchi a very nice color. Color, yeah? yes. Exactly. Pretty red color. Red color. If you don't want to put beetroot juice, you don't have to. You don't have to. But um, in this recipe, we are. If you don't like beetroot, so don't add beetroot. So, so you're you just going to add water then? No, no water. <laughs> so this is 30 grams of flour. Yes. Uh some beetroot juice so and what and potato. I potatoes. think it was one potato or two. So yes, one potato, one big potato. It's forming a nice thick dough. And later on we have to add egg also. Yeah. So, I said since you make pasta yourself, or I means the chefs and me for you, they make pastas themselves in Zigulinis. So, I'm sure you find it very strange buying pasta off the shelf in a supermarket. Supermarket, yes. Because uh, you you make your own pasta. Your own pasta, yeah. exactly. You make your own pasta dough rather. So now we're gonna add egg yolk. And one question: What is the difference between homemade pasta and pasta? From the market. From the market. Okay. What's the difference? 
so homemade pot uh, is basically we make a uh, laminate and we use it and we make with uh, our hands so in a uh, packets uh, i don't know how many times they have make and they give to the markets so yeah. it's uh, so it's just different. That it's it's softer you would say Okay, because no, they, if, they I this, if I if I boil the spaghetti, yes, you making homemade spaghetti, and if I boil the, the spaghetti in yes. supermarkets, what's the difference? Once you no. eat the, you know, if I eat uh, acid spaghetti in my spaghetti, what would be the difference? It's a uh, inner taste. Yeah. Okay, and uh, some homemade spaghetti is uh, you know it's take a uh, not so much time to cook. And the, the other spaghettis, it will take time but because they are in taste the, also. Okay. The homemade spaghetti, it give you more taste. Okay. More it's fresh. Tasty, of more course. fresh taste. Yeah, yeah. So you added one egg or egg yolk? Egg yolk, only egg yolk. Okay, it looks very pretty. It reminds me of. Is this seven? It reminds me of dough you can use in Valentine's. It has a very pretty pink color. Yeah. So if you've just joined in, uh, we are making gnocchi, homemade gnocchi, gnocchi. with uh, mushrooms and beetroot and fresh tomatoes. Tomatoes. So we added 30 grams of flour, one big potato, boiled. Boiled potatoes. Uh, we added beetroot juice. Juice, yes. Egg yolk. Egg yolk. No salt and pepper. No salt and pepper because we gonna use salt and pepper in our sauce. So how come we don't add yeast to this? No yeast? No yeast, no yeast. Because it's not a pizza dough. Mm. Yes, our dough is ready. Thank as you. you see, the color of the dough looks very pretty. Wow! So now we're gonna make the shape of gnocchi. Okay, so you, this is going to be oblong? Uh, it's going to be a little bit square, we make square. The basic and the classic shape of gnocchi. So now we're going to boil it. Yes. So while our gnocchi was boiling, so we prepare our we'll sauce. The sauce yeah. We cut the mushrooms. These are fresh mushrooms? Fresh mushrooms. I can stir it for you. 
I'll keep on stirring it here. Asparagus? This is asparagus, okay. Should I add some olive oil? Yes. Mmm, what a lovely aroma. I think it's the aroma of asparagus. Yeah. Yeah. And garlic. At the end, we add tomatoes. So I think, yes. Yeah, this is done. Our is done. So we add our gnocchi with the pasta water. Can I turn this on? Yes. We add salt and paper. This is very pretty. Wow. Yes, and our gnocchi was done. Wow, this is so such a different recipe, and it's fun to make. You know, if you yes. want to um, entertain yourself also yes. and challenge yourself, make the gnocchi dough at home. At home, he's added beetroot juice to it, and um, some asparagus, asparagus and mushrooms, mushrooms, and mushrooms and tomatoes. Wow. So now we're gonna. So. Yes, you shout us in. Yes, now we're gonna plate it out. Okay. For the plating, I separate my gnocchi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, first, we put asparagus, mushroom, and tomatoes on the bottom. Can I taste one gnocchi? Yeah, sure. Just want to taste one. Can I have a spoon? And a small plate. Maybe. It is. Yes. Okay, I'll just take one from here. Just, just a bit. I can tell everyone how this is. Mm. Also, it's really nice. This is delicious. You have to make this at home. So you're so lucky you have chefs working in a five-star hotel. Yes. And uh, you get to learn all the secrets and how to make authentic cuisine. Cuisine. Okay. Really nice. And also, gnocchi um, is served with, well, this is asparagus sauce, but is there any kind of sauce? Yes, you can, you can, yes, you can make with a tomato sauce, okay. you can, with a cream sauce, yeah. cheese sauce. You can leave this for Cream sauce? Milk-based yes. sauce? Yes, milk-based okay. sauce also. Pesto sauce as well. Mm. It's really nice. It looks very pretty. So we have oil. And now for the popular edible flowers, right Asad? Yes, edible flowers and there's some powder. Yes, now we're going to add edible flowers.
This looks very nice. The pink gnocchi and the pink rose petals. Ah. What are these? These are fried vegetables for garnishing. Thank you. Yes. When your was ready. Ready. Looks beautiful. Thank you so much, Asad, uh, for taking time out. You know, when chefs come and do a cooking show, it's just um, they have to prepare overnight, yes. a day before. Yes. Work and stay back long hours and uh, think of something different so that, you know, all of you at home can have something new to learn. Thank you so much, Asad. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, it was so much of fun learning how to make these three amazing recipes and especially the presentation. If you have any suggestions or feedback, you can write to us on our PTV World Facebook page and our chefs at the Islamabad Marriott Hotel will be very happy to uh, get back to you. I'm going to catch you next week with another uh, new episode of Dine with World. Till then, Keep on smiling, be happy, be grateful. Allah Hafiz.